Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Change Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you very much. Your home, your family, your day. May the Lord give what your heart desires. And He will. He'll give if you believe. You will live everything you need to do is believe. So believe. Take possession. Don't give up on what the Lord has promised you because it will come. We go through trials, many of them, but the Lord delivers us from all. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He'll ask us to do things that for our flesh, decisions that for our flesh will be painful. Yes, but it will be worth it. In the end, we find that all the decisions, that it was worth it that it was worth it. All the decisions that the Lord asked me to make, which at that moment were challenging and painful, later, I saw how much it was worth, how important it was. So don't be afraid to make decisions, to break through, to take steps of faith, to do what is necessary. Do what is necessary. A moment may be painful, but it's just a moment. It passes. Look. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. After the circumcision, which was a radical, painful cut in the flesh, and at that time, it was a physical cut. The cut was physical, literally in the flesh. Now it is of the heart. And he made that cut at 99 years old. He had the courage to make this covenant, this painful cut. It surely hurt. It did it hurt. It hurted. Yes, it surely it hurt a lot. It took some time for him to recover, of course, but it passed. And soon after, he had Isaac. Based on the covenant, on the covenant. He didn't have him before the covenant. We need to make a covenant with the Lord. He wants a serious commitment. Serious commitment. Some people want intimacy without commitment. They want to experience all that God can offer but without a serious commitment to Him. They don't want to make a cut in the flesh. And that's why they don't live all they could live. And you know that a couple shared exactly this testimony fits here. Exactly that. They were sympathetic to God, the church, and the word. They came on Sundays, and if there was an even on Saturday that extended, or if they had, and then it wasn't possible, or if they had to travel. So when they had to travel, they would 
they used to travel, and they was, and they always had this in mind. No, but I love God. God knows my heart. And and then no, I'll I'll one day I'll take a day of the week and I'll go. And when I can, because God will understand me. So, the person. They spoke beautifully. They spoke beautifully about God. They were sympathetic, bright. As the woman herself said, "Oh, I love the bishop," but she saw that she had many things. She saw the blessing of God, but it wasn't complete. Her health wasn't complete. Her family, her children, her emotional health. She felt a void, a dissatisfaction. She wasn't living a fulfilling marriage. She didn't have security. She didn't trust her husband completely. She had, she had insecurity. She saw that she had reached a certain point, but couldn't break through that barrier. And she said, "It was because why? Because she didn't want to give up living her way. So she got up whenever she wanted, did what she wanted. God wasn't." Her priority. She wasn't doing anything for the kingdom. You know, yes, I'm sympathetic. I'm not doing anything for the kingdom, nothing for anyone. I go to church when I can, if I can, if I can't, if I don't, God will understand. I like everything, but don't commit to anything seriously because I don't want to give up. She didn't want to give up her event, her dinners, her travels, her pleasures, her club, her pool, her events. She didn't want to. She didn't want to because, for example, oh, I had an event, so I I couldn't go. I, I was invited to lunch on Sunday, so I couldn't go to church, and so on. Oh, my husband planned a trip during the vacation period, so I can do the purpose. And she saw that she wasn't living fully. And it's the same with Abraham. He was making decisions, but his life underwent a radical change when the covenant was made. It was when the promised child came. Read the text and you'll see. The promised child came later. Before it, it didn't come. So I see that some people want to leave everything, but also don't want to give everything up, don't want to make a cut in the flesh. And she said that one day she was watching the program and the Lord spoke exactly about circumcision, about cuts, decisions. And she said, Bishop, it's not that I hadn't heard about making God a priority. And It's because I didn't enter, and I also didn't want to. I didn't want to give up, but I wasn't okay either. And it is not because I didn't have a good house, a good car, travels, din dinner. She said, shouldn't I be okay? But I wasn't. I was taking medication for depression, for anxiety. My children were in the same situation. I wasn't okay. Sometimes I was in my house, a house so well built, decorated, and I felt suff suffocated, unhappy, empty. How many times did I come back from dinner with important people, feeling empty, unhappy, spending the night crying, waking up shattered, with no strength to wash my face, she said. 
But I was sympathetic to everything. Until one day the Lord told me that. That I was trading great things for fleeting, empty, momentary things. That poor and feeling me, satisfying me. That I was living an empty, selfish life. She said. And when she made the decision, she influenced her house, she, her husband, her children, were freed. When she put God first and made a commitment, a, a line on the ground, she made a cut in the flesh, she said she had to cut many things. It started with her selfishness, hedonism. She said, I used to live a hedonistic and selfish life. My standard was hedonistic, a hedonistic standard. That's why I was so empty and unhappy. She said, I had to cut friendships, places, and things I liked. But they weren't fulfilling me. At that moment, momentarily, it seemed like I was okay. But I saw that it wasn't nourishing, my, nourishing me. I needed God for real, not just to be sympathetic to the things of God. I needed to truly embrace God. And she said that the decisions for her, for her flesh, were very difficult. But those decisions brought healing, life, satisfaction. She said, the first time I decided to do something for the kingdom, which was to help the church school, I felt so full of life and fulfillment that I had never felt that before. Never. I had never felt so much peace. And she said, it's, it's not worth it. You know, sometimes we exchange things so important, so powerful, things for things so small, so insignificant that in reality, they make no difference in our lives. So when Abraham made that cut in the flesh at 99 years old, he had Isaac, the child of the promise. Do you see? Maybe what is missing for you to get your Isaac. The dream of your life, Isaac, represents laughter of laughter. Forgot to, for, forgot to fill your mouth with laughter. You have to make this cut in the flesh to remove things that are wonderful and amazing for your flesh, but are killing your spirit, are separating you from God. Embrace God. Truly, don't just be sympathetic, thinking it's nice and wonderful. Embrace God for real in your life. Prioritize Him. He wants a relationship with you. He wants commitment. He wants surrender. Make that cut in the flesh. And you'll live the promise of a lifetime. Isaac was the promise of a lifetime. And Isaac didn't come. But re read the text. Go and read it. In Genesis. But when he made the cut in the flesh, he had Isaac. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac. That's the reason he had Isaac and circumcised him. It means so that it, could co it would continue. He circumcised the son. He circumcised, circumcised him eight days after, after his birth. He, already, he had already passed this standard to his son because the father passed it to the son. Parents pass it to their children. They live this life where God is the priority. They teach their children. The father did it, went through the, the circumcision and circumcised the son. And Abraham become, became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. 
Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of twelve patriarchs. You see that things grow. You see that things keep growing because they are being generated based on the covenant, a covenant with God. Only grows. You see that it keeps growing because the patriarchs, look at this, were jealous of Joseph. They saw him as a slave into Egypt, but God was with him. Because when you are in covenant with God, you might go through some situations, but God will be with you. And if God is with you, look, and rescued him from all his troubles. Troubles came, but God delivered him from all of them, rescued him from all of them. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the good will of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You start living a life of freedom with favor, if you have favor, and wisdom. It doesn't matter who, who you are standing before. He was before Pharaoh. He was an ungodly man. Yes, he was. But he had God with him. God was with him and favored him and gave him wisdom. And what no one could do, the wise ones, the powerful of the time could not interpret the Pharaoh's dream. The wisest and most intelligent of the time could not, couldn't interpret Pharaoh's dream. But Joseph did. Look, because God gave what? Gave him what? Favor and wisdom. That's what God does. Pharaoh was surrounded by the most important and capable people. Yes. But who? could interpret his dreams. The man of God, the same thing happened in Daniel's days. Nebuchadnezzar was surrounded by the best, the most capable people. He took the best and placed them with him. And they couldn't And could they interpret his dreams? No, they couldn't. Who could? The man of God? That's what many people don't understand. Don't understand. Sometimes there are people who are more capable than you, but they don't have the favor and wisdom of God. Because it's the favor and wisdom of God that make the difference. You need the favor and wisdom of God, and for that, you need to be in covenant with Him. You need to make a covenant with him, starting with, starting with circumcision, with a cut in the flesh. Joseph was a man in covenant with God, who had gone, who had gone through circumcision. Daniel too, people in covenant, who had a covenant with God, who made a cut in the flesh. David too, so much so that he looked at Goliath and called him uncircumcised. What was he saying? This guy is big and strong. He is well prepared, but he doesn't have a covenant with God. My God, that's too, too strong. A person, look at him and, and say, yes, okay, he's everything you're saying, but he doesn't have a covenant with God. He has everything, but he doesn't have the main thing. He doesn't have a covenant with God. Okay, he has everything. He has training, he has size, he has strength. He's armed to the teeth. He intimidates. He has capability, but he doesn't have God. He doesn't have God's protection. He doesn't have a covenant with God. But the little young David did. And he was the one who won. He, he did. All those wise men around Pharaoh had everything, but they didn't have a covenant with God. But Joseph did. 
All those wise men, nobles, and magicians around Nebuchadnezzar had all the natural human capacity. They had everything, but they didn't have a covenant with God. But Daniel did. That's what you need to understand. You can have everything, but if you don't have a covenant with God, you lack the main thing. If you don't embrace the Lord, the main thing will always be missing because the world doesn't give you peace. Money doesn't give peace. No. You can't. People, I've been in mansions. Places like that, they are breathtaking. You pass through the garage and there are cars that cost the most 500 and something thousand. The most basic of cars. And you enter the bathroom and the person's medicine cab cabinet is full of controlled medications. And the person is there, you know, laid out, disheveled. Not even smelling good. In that huge bed. So, you can have everything. But if you don't have a covenant with God, a relationship with the Lord, you lack the main thing. The main thing is God. And He is the one who delivers us, delivers us from tribulations and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom, enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Because he had a covenant with God, he received favor and wisdom. Who was Joseph compared to those people? A foreigner? A slave and prisoner. And he became the one who governed them all. Led them all. You see, he went ahead of everyone because he had a covenant with God. Abraham became the father of a nation because he made a covenant with God at 99, at 99 years old. That's this. That's it. Listen to the word of the Lord. What is God speaking to you? You know, right? So, instead of getting upset, frustrated, And even asking, oh, I don't know, I don't know. No, you know. Maybe you don't want to. You find it difficult to let go of some things. But it's worth it. I've been walking with God for a long time. And everything God asked, asked me to do, no matter how painful it was, was for my good. And all the people I've seen through themselves into the Lord, make a covenant with Him, a cut in the flesh became better. They became strong, happy people, triumphed, and were put in charge. God has the best for you. But He wants a whole heart. Make a covenant with Him. Give everything Let go, because God will place you in charge. He'll give you favor, wisdom, and you'll prevail. You'll stand out. You'll see the difference in your life, and people will see. Because God... He does in a person's life. He did it in Abraham's life and through him. He did it in Joseph's life and through him. In Daniel's life and through him. Let God work in your life. And you'll see what he'll do through you. Get up. Don't be afraid to break through, to make decisions, to make a cut in the flesh, no matter how painful it is. Maybe there are things you are holding on to that you find so hard to let go of that actually won't make any difference compared to what God will do in your life. When we make the cut, when Abraham did, it hurt. It hurt, even because he did it late, right? It hurt. 
but it passed. And what remained was the protection, the greatness, the favor of God, the fulfillment of promises that was worth it. Every pain, it was worth the pain. It was worth those moments that passed. The, the pain passed. And the blessing remained. So make the cut. Because the pain is now. Because it may pain now. You may feel the pain now. But it will pass. And what will remain is God's blessing in your life. God has favor and wisdom for you. Make room. Because with the Lord's favor and wisdom in your life, you'll go ahead of many people. Just like Joseph did. God is saying, oh, he was with Joseph. And he is with you. And he wants to show his strength. And he probably hasn't been able to do more precisely because he's waiting for a radical decision from you. Nehemiah made a decision, a strong, radical. He broke away from that comfortable life, that beautiful place. He embraced his calling. He understood that those walls were his destiny. He invested his life in that. And that's why God could promote him highly. God did in his life and through him, he still does today. Because Nehemiah's faith has built up my life and yours. Get up. The life worth living is the one that is lived for God. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus e meu Lord, my God and my Father. I pray for it, dear life that is with me. And I ask, may this word, Lord, have illuminated each person's understanding. Yes, let it have brought light to this darkness. So may they have been seen, have been seen understanding, fully comprehending what may be hidden from their eyes or what they were ignoring. They don't want to see. Lord, I pray that May they have the strength to do what is necessary to make the decisions that are needed and live your glory for they will live it. Bless homes, families, all who send their prayer requests. I consecrate everything I bind here on earth as victories so that they are may they be bound on, in heaven. I agree with these victories. May they live, Lord, fully their destiny. May peace Rule their heart, joy, strength, and may they be guided by the Spirit. Bless my friends and fellow sowers. I prophesy the gift of wealth, prosperity, and anointing of conquest, and anointing of ten times more. Raise more sowers because we need them. And wherever this program is reaching, may lives have been renewed, strengthened, may minds be renewed, May the word have taken heart and may it leave us and may I leave a strong and determined people whole heart. Because when the Lord has everything from us, we have everything from the Lord. Thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. I ask for I ask for your blessing. I get my blessing. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank God. The Life Helpline phone number is 5511-3296-9449. We're located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's where we are. And today, the cry out in prayer of the 52 days, it's time for prayer at all times. Tomorrow, firm, tomorrow, firm house, Friday, the sixth fast, and so we go from, from glory to glory and from victory to victory. Count on us. It is always a pleasure to serve. And if the Lord just doesn't come back, I will continue here talking about life and life change. Have a nice day. Amen.